Thank you very much, Macarena. It is very thrilling to be leading this panel on the 10th anniversary of panel. It seems as if it were yesterday where we met at Guarulhos Airport to hold our first LACNOG meeting. At that time, at least, I didn't realize that so much could have been achieved over the past 10 years. But we have really star guests here, in addition to the founders, as well as the LACNOG chair. Let me very briefly make a couple of channels, and I have a request for you. We're not going to have presentations. This is just a panel we'll be talking. So please do the following. There you will see my screen, and it shows you how to show gallery view. If you put gallery view, you will be able to see all the speakers at the same time, and that will allow you to enjoy this panel better. So I will stop sharing my screen. You have the button, button at the top right. And now we officially begin with the panel. 10th anniversary, 10 years. We as humans love the issue of celebrating anniversary or special numbers, all that end in zero. So it's a good moment to reflect on the things we have done and where we are heading 10 years ago. Internet, the way we know it today, was different. We couldn't imagine this. The social media were just coming up. Videos on the internet was something that was not so common. The results were somehow frustrating at the time. And the fact that the bandwidth was quite limited led to the fact that it wasn't so easy to do videos on the internet and the development of the codex. So 10 years ago, we did Bing in IPv6, but this IPv6 tactic did, was not used today. A quarter of all users are using IPv6. So there are many topics that we can reflect on. So allow me to introduce the panelists who have joined us today. And as I mentioned their names, please turn on your cameras. We have Arturo Servin. 10 years ago, he was LACNIC's uh, technology, man technology manager. Now he works for Google, Ricardo Patara. He is from Nick VR. He, Nicolas Antoniello. 10 years ago, we had been colleagues at Antel Uruguay. And Christian O'Flaherty from Internet Society. And Ariel Weher, our current LACNOC chair. And although he was not one of the founders, I think he will cast a great and interesting view on what it means to incorporate the join the LACNO community. We now have six minutes for each speaker and then two minutes for the second round. And I will be letting you know when your time is up. So to start with, we have some questions to start the conversation. What did we do in the past? What did we do well? What we did, did we do badly? And where we are heading? So I'd like to ask the founding members to give us some uh, memories of those times when we found it. And Arturo, you will start. I'm, you're the first one I can see here. Yes, like you were saying, well, some memories, well, my memories, memory starts to fail me, but I recall having spoken to Raul Echeverria on a sunny day in his office and with LACNOG and what we're going to do. And we had discussed with Christian that we could organize an event. And I think it must have been June or July in Montevideo, which is in the middle of winter. So, but I don't recall much more. But one of the first things I remember, in addition to the fact that LACNOG initially was a discussion list before holding any event, and there were great discussions. People used to ask things on the autonomous systems, DNSs, and other things. At that time, then, I don't know if you remember, and there was a certain period of time, LACNIC only held an annual meeting, which was in the month of May. In October, we didn't have any meetings. And what they were trying to 
to do is how we could go back to having the second annual meeting and not just the policy forum. The first part of the year, as you recall, the meeting was quite similar. There was a strong technical component on IPv6 issues. We had the working group, we had the task forces, we worked on security issues, and we were trying to figure out what we could do for the second annual meeting in the year. Christian came up with the idea of organizing a LACMUG, and to join this with LACMUG event. And this was not far-fetched at the time because this is something that other registries also did. Arin held one of its meetings with NANOG in the United States in the North America region. And APNIC did this with APRICOT, which was the first part. And then RIPE, they have a different type of organization, which is a bit more complex. So, this was not so far-fetched at the time, and the complex point was that this was June or July or even August, and we wanted to have the meeting in September or October. They so really had to go out and find hotels and organize things. That is why we ended up in that hotel that is so near to the airport of Sao Paulo. It is far away from any place you can think of. So we were at the hotel and we couldn't go anywhere. So this was to a certain extent also positive. And I recall that a lot of people joined us. We never expected that we'd have such a great turnout and such a big impact. So it was a great event and it was so good that 10 years later, we are here again celebrating the, the work we did, which was a good job, I think. Thank you, Arturo. Nico, would you like to take the floor now? I'm starting with the founding members and the best we leave for the end. You have the floor at the end, Ariel. Hi, thank you, Carlos. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's not so easy to make comments, Carlos, because I mean, we will be speaking about similar experiences. What I recall, and listen to Arturo now, I remember how all this began, all this of NACNOC began, the previous uh, situations before that meeting in Guarulhos in Brazil. We were a list, and if I'm not mistaken, we had created a list, hosted and donated by LACNIC, and in fact, this was a mailing list I think it was lacnog at lacnic.net. It had a limited activity in terms of mails, but initially it served a purpose. And like in other registries, as in other NOGs in the other regions, this list had the purpose of exchanging experiences, questions, problems, when any problems arose in terms of connectivity that were of a massive nature in the region or in the event of massive attacks in the region, or any issues that would happen as a network operators group. So we knew that we could go to that list and describe the problem. At that time, as Carlos explained, I used to work at the network operator at the operation center. And one of the things that I always found quite interesting, uh, interesting of the operating centers is that the telecoms are somehow reluctant to publish problems. Nobody wishes to tell everyone else that they had a problem with something. And this somehow goes against the nature we have as people who are in the technical area, whenever we have a problem, we like to share it so that we can figure out a solution and then mitigate the situation and also to help other technical experts. So for some mysterious reason, the NOGs are like a world on their own and you are allowed to publish problems and also 
to receive recommendations and feedback. And this began timidly as a mailing list, like Arturo was saying, back in 2010. At that Guarulhos meeting, it was like Nick Sao Paulo, because from Sao Paulo to Guarulhos, it's not so far away, but it takes a long time for, to go from the city of Sao Paulo to the Guarulhos airport. So it takes quite long. And I also remember that when we arrived at the event in Guarulhos, I think Aaron was there and we had nothing to eat at all because the first day we finished very late. So we went out to have some hamburgers to a restaurant. <laughs> but if I don't even remember that because I think they took out some deep frozen hamburgers out of a bag and then they put that into the microwave oven and then that's what we had to eat. So that is how Macnog began at that event. And if I'm not mistaken, back in 2013, three years later, we started with a further drive in order to formalize LACNOG a bit more. We created statutes, not uh, to become independent as an organization, but to have uh, kind of uh, statutes. So that's, this was an attempt that wasn't completely finished at that time. And I guess maybe because of the maturity process that Black Nog was going through. At present, I think we are at a stage, at the ideal stage, in which we can take that next step eventually. And I think the community and Black Nog particularly has evolved incredibly we learned so much in the past years as a community and of course everything we did would have been impossible it, it would be impossible and i don't think that in the future it would be possible either to do it uh, uh, alone it's a uh, so luck not can, can cannot work uh, on its own other the the uh, collaboration of LACNIC and ISOC and other organizations that have uh, helped us has have been absolutely essential. So that is um, the experience that I wanted to share with you. I think that the spirit uh, of LACNOG uh, needs to be um, a uh, space where we as uh, technical people needed to be able to share our problems uh, and collaborate in troubleshooting. Today I can help you, tomorrow you'll help me. So no matter how well trained we are, none of us can solve any problems or know everything. Far from that, far, far from that. So that it uh, tells a lot. Uh, it speaks very well of a regional uh, organization having reached so far. All of us, not just the people, uh, not 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 just today's speakers, but uh, all those who uh, are part of the community and uh, didn't are not attending the event. There are two things that you said and that I'd like to highlight, Nico. The fact that the uh, uh, network operators are those environments where we can tell each other everything, feeling no blame. Uh, that we are not guilty that's a good thing and i also liked your comment as to where we are going and this is a good time to think of the future steps for organization now ricardo who hosted that first meeting um sort of famous meeting at the airport so that he can tell us what he remembers and uh, his comments thank you carlos thank you for the invitation and uh, for inviting me to participate in uh, this uh, important uh, 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 section of the event. There are many things, many things uh, that Arturo and Nicolás already mentioned, uh, but um, uh, going on with uh, the story, it's impressive to see the, the list. It, uh, it started in 2007, at the time uh, Herman sent the first, he worked for LACNIC, and uh, at the time, if I remember well, 
the policy list was the only environment that we had for communications in the regional com community. So there we uh, discussed uh, topics that showed the need to have uh, another space for more technical discussions. And at the time, I'm sure that there were national groups that were very important, but a very nice characteristic of our region is uh, the way we exchange uh, information and the way we share and collaborate. And that was a space that was missing. Many people used uh, the list of North America for communications of a kind. So there we saw that it would be interesting to create a space where we could debate the technical things. And that is where we created in 2007, after Herman's announcement, uh, uh, we, they created the list. The first message was on December the 12th with a message that I sent to the list making some comments about the route uh, uh, aggregation. Uh, we already were concerned about the size of uh, the uh, uh, table and some people um, that were already compiling the data and generating. So we, we did that work for the for our community and we said, well, maybe you can improve your uh, advertisements. And uh, I remember with, as Arturo said, that was uh, already a space with a very advanced quality, technical quality, until finally we started meeting live in 2010. But it's also interesting to, to state that there was a possibility that the North Americans would hold meetings in our region, and somehow we had to show evidence that the group was already well consolidated. So that is why we promoted that uh, possibility of having an in-person meeting. At the time, I was already working for NEC Brazil, and with the support of NEC Brazil, we organized uh, a joint uh, meeting with uh, uh, NEC BR, with the operators in Brazil, and with LACNOG and LACNIC. And I don't remember whether Arturo said it, that LACNIC was meeting only once a year. Well, initially they had two meetings, but then afterwards uh, they ran out of topics. So they started planning for just one annual meeting. So the framework to start again with two meetings was precisely then. And it's interesting to see that there was a certain concern of whether it was a, going to be a meeting with a lot of people. It was a wonderful number of people. The audience was uh, packed and uh, everybody was happy about the meeting, everybody asking for more. And uh, that, uh, so uh, LACNIC and uh, um, we uh, decided as LACNOC to organize the meetings together with LACNIC and start sharing our events. The other interesting thing, and with this I'm done, that at the time LACNOC had the mailing list, but uh, the it was not very well organized. So there we, uh, we created the first programs committee at the time to organize the meeting. And then that group continued to organize the, the next meetings. And then we created the board. So there was a programs committee, then it went on working, but another body was uh, created, the board to discuss issues more typical of the organization. So that was the framework uh, for uh, organizing our pr uh, programs committee. So that's it. Thank you, Ricardo. The, so uh, continuing with that, with the list, I remember putting it, having it with uh, 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 Christian with, it's interesting because um, there are things in, in, the, in the internet that change, but there are others that don't change. So the region of Laknake for some reason is the one that, that, that breaks down at the, uh, that disaggregates more, even more than Africa. I don't remember having that discussion with Christian. He said that 
It was not important because the routers were cheap. So that's one of the things that I remember of that event. I, at the time, I didn't know Christian, so I was more careful. So Christian, should we go on with you? Yes, because let me clarify. It's not that it didn't matter because it was inexpensive, but the impact in the global table was minimal compared to what they did in the region. So it's, it's a problem that it didn't solve much. And, uh, but it's a good point to show how many things that live require many discussions. The uh, mailing list, it didn't work. And in our case, that was very evident, of course, that we had to know the near. And of course, uh, although there was a first meeting of LACNIC in the year, and I wanted to rescue something that Ricardo just mentioned, the role of NECBR. The approval for the uh, uh, first budget in ISOC was in October 2008. I recovered new emails, but at the beginning it was difficult to convince uh, the organizations, Arturo said that LACNIC uh, uh, joined us uh, uh, after uh, when just a few months were missing. At the beginning, it was not clear that this would be a successful meeting and that it would have a space that wouldn't compete with other events and meetings. It was sort of there were many doubts, and Nick BR in January 2010 confirmed that they were interested, and that was essential because when Nick BR repeated their support, um, uh, uh, until then, all the rest of the organizations that had some doubts started joining us, and th that made it much easier when there's institutional interest to support a project like this, then the wheel star starts turning. And uh, another funny thing that you mentioned was the place. It looked, uh, it seemed a bit bizarre. This had to be, the, uh, we, 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 we couldn't charge for this event and Sao Paulo is too big. So we couldn't hold uh, an event without charging in the downtown area because we couldn't uh, afford it. So uh, Milton precisely helped us uh, uh, un uh, unlock those things. And he suggested Guarulhos. And initially I was surprised, but it was good because it was far enough for people in Sao Paulo to have to try a bit hard to go, but not so far for the people who had to pay for a hotel. So it was a good balance. Nico didn't like it much because there was nobody you could eat, but for me, it was a good decision. And um, so it's good to learn of these things. After we had a date and a fixed place, everything started turning faster. LACNIC got excited to organize the public policy forum together with that event and other organizations that until then had not shown any interest, such as Red Clara, center representative in the committee. We put together the programs committee. We called for presentations. So we did all that. And at the same time, the people of, of uh, uh, NIC, um, were in charge of the details. For the first time, I was working with a meeting and I learned how very complicated it is. And and ever since, I really see the importance of what Adrian and the rest of the people in, in LACNIC uh, say, um, do. And there are many, many things that require a lot of work and that are not seen. And I experienced it even more in, uh, uh, in a, uh, at meetings later on, and thanks to the patience of the LACNIC people, we, uh, despite our improvisations, we mm, succeeded. LACNOC always had operated as a forum with uh, its own agenda, and sometimes we complicate things. And now, looking back 10 years later, 
it's a pleasure to see how everything works so uh, easily. And as a funny anecdote, just uh, checking the mails, I saw that at the next meeting, the meeting was in Sao Paulo, the first one was in Sao Paulo, the second in Buenos Aires, organizing the uh, speakers and with the computer um, in the corridor and going out to see whose turn it was to uh, uh, present the next. I, I went to see the name of the agenda and my laptop was no longer there, nor was Jordi's. So this was the first problem that we had uh, at an event of LACNIC. Uh, we were stolen our laptops in Buenos Aires. So the uh, lesson learned is that it is important to know each other and to trust each other. And at least until last year, we managed to do that with live meetings, with in-person meeting. Maybe now things change, but it's very important for people to get to know each other, to share experiences. And the same applies within each country. It is very useful for each country to have the people that operate uh, the networks that know each other and that trust each other. So that was that is the first thing that everybody is in line and uh, before the situation and and then everything works much better. Thank you, Christian. So the last speaker, Ariel Weher, is uh, somebody who's growing a lot in the LACNA community, Ariel was not in the initial group, but he joined us very quickly and maybe he has a different perspective. Ariel, what did you experience when you joined this community when uh, that discusses how to number the ones in IPv6? Ooh, thank you, that was a wonderful presentation. I don't know whether I deserve so much, but to tell you the truth, you, reminded me of many uh, uh, nice things. I got nostalgic with your comments. To, really, when I started working with network operators with ISPs, it was 1998, 1999, in a very, very small company that I still represent today, I had a different perspective of what the network's operator was. The common thing was to go to the large events by vendors where we almost, nobody speaks of things that don't uh, come out right, just the good things. But then afterwards, when you go to your company and you want to implement the things of the same vendor, it won't work. So in a very different context, one of my teachers took me to a larger ISP to work with him. And one day I received some comments saying uh, uh, that the LACNIC events were very good. A colleague said it at the time, in addition to the resources and all that, for handling the resources, nobody uh, discussed this uh, too much. So we started to investigate the issue of the events, etc. And precisely, I want to highlight what was said earlier, that among the good things, we talked about the networking community. And, and uh, people said, well, it's wonderful to be able to say what we did right, what did it wrong, and that we can be very straightforward, very uh, very honest. In that company, nobody had an employee uh, traveled abroad to attend any events. So all of that led, uh, made us uh, start uh, speaking about how good it was. Uh, it was in LACNIC 12 that was in Panama. And at the end, my boss was the one who traveled. He came back and he was marveled. And I always 
like to, to try new things and do new things. And then this guy came and he said, we don't have IPv6. You have to put IPv6 right away. Why is it that we don't have IPv6? And I said, well, uh, at the time, that was something quite novel. The uh, uh, machine support was not very complete. Well, the old story. So, but he came so excited. So the first Monday after he came back from the event, he brought many, many things to do. And afterwards, we did them little by little. And then we started studying. I started studying the topic and what there was available. And somehow we start, uh, we ended up using that company a bit as a guinea pig on many issues. And it was, that was the way it was. So we, time went by, we started deploying, we gained experience. And then the next event that if I'm not wrong was Curaçao. The first event in Curaçao, and my boss went on his own too. He didn't take me. And he came back, and again, I said, well, what's the list of tasks that he'll ask me to do when he comes back of this new event of Laknik? And he came back and he said, well, by the end of the year, there will be an event that will be precisely for you. And I said, how come? Well, it will be in Sao Paulo. So the network operators are the ones that are going to attend. We, I discussed everything, so you're going to Sao Paulo. Wonderful. So that's not knowing anything. And without having worked in the community, I did, they bought me an air ticket to go to Sao Paulo. And really, I always tell the story, I discussed it with more than one of you, that the image that I had before going was uh, very different. Although networking was very good, we were sort of uh, uh, um, uh, we, we, uh, in a very closed area. It rained all week. There was a pool and uh, a table tennis. Uh, a room that couldn't be used and uh, we couldn't uh, go to the swimming pool. But the event went by. And as a matter of fact, there's always an anecdote that Tomas tells. Imagine that I was already trying to deal with IPv6 for some time. And one of the carriers that provided service to us uh, exhibited in uh, at the, the event in Latu because he, they said that they were fully compatible with IPv6. And he said, you are lying because I've been asking you for four months. But, so that's an anecdote that was that many people still remember it. So this event, um, uh, went uh, by and uh, and then I, how did I join Lacknog? Well, I participated in the list and uh, once I was invited to give a, uh, an IPv6 tutorial in Chile at the Lacknog event. And that's where I think that that was the first time that we presented. We also presented a, uh, a paper by Lacknog. So I was asked to be a speaker, then I started getting more involved. Christian Ovlaherty gave me some, uh, asked me to help him with some things. And that is how all this happened. Well, I have my own stopwatch and it tells me that I ran out of time. And another day I was uh, talking to somebody uh, that is uh, Luisa from uh, the Caribbean and Edgar said, but join us. It's good. You like it. It's a good thing. So there I nominated, um, uh, I applied for one of the elections in 2014 or 2015. And I remember that uh, we were in tie break with Chicho. So the two of us uh, were elected and then Rogerio was elected in the next elections. So from then uh, on, I was always part of the board. Lucknog has a lot of uh, backstage work 
that is volunteer. So sometimes it seems as if it, as if the decisions were not taken so fast, this would happen in a private organization, but there are many, many people that uh, collaborate. And why am I in my position today? Because that is elected internally. It's a very democratic organization, in spite of the fact that it's not uh, legally incorporated. And the members of the board decide who the chair is. We take turns. And that is defined. Uh, and so the chair defines uh, the uh what uh, the organization does and now this part of the story it's it's uh i i was uh i'm in charge and during the pandemic i could go on for hours i i like to rescue a couple of things that you said that are remarkable the fact that well you know that now i'm in the programs committee and several of you are in the board others are in some of of Lucknox task forces but in the end Many, many people worked in Lucknow. Everybody left uh, their uh, uh, printing. Rogerio will talk later about uh, submarine cables. That's going to be wonderful. And I remember the, uh, all of you that you have the Q&A panel. You can send your questions. And now uh, I don't have any names, so I'm going to uh, read some comments so to see uh, where we should go. But maybe the uh, network operators community should also consider it. Who starts? Everybody's silent. I can't believe it. Christian sort of, uh, it seemed as if he wanted to unmute his laptop. Yes, what stopped you? Well, instead, of thinking of the evolution, I wanted to take advantage of this moment because two and I, I pro are promoting the national NOGs. So I thought that it would be good to discuss how to have the local level uh, evolve. I think that the two things are interesting because they should uh, go hand in hand. Yes, it's very important for people to feel at ease as internet uh, works uh, with uh, network uh, uh, with networks people need to collaborate so and even uh, people should be able to collaborate and get efficiency with the uh, ip uh, ixps because it, if we don't, then we would go to the prehistoric networks where the vendor came and put everything and uh, the network operators opened the manual and called uh, so, uh, the, uh, the help desk for troubleshooting. And that doesn't work. If the internet starts working like that, we are ruining it. If we don't know what's happening in our network and we are responsible for the configurations, then it won't. Uh, it will stop working efficiently. For the internet to work efficiently, those in interconnections and networks to be healthy, we need collaboration and people need to trust each other. At a regional level, this is the forum, but at a local level, it's also good for people to know each other. Sometimes because, of, uh, because they compete against each other, the companies make it difficult for the operators to trust each other. It's difficult when you operate a network that our bosses may promote and get together with the uh, competitors operators. They see it as a risky thing. And when we manage to form the, to, to build trust in the groups and in the countries, we have a better impact and a better effect that at a regional level because the closer you have the people to the network, the more opportunities appear and more collaboration. So I think that we should create similar groups in the countries. If we have to force a meeting or an event, LACNIC or ISAC or ourselves, we can help you. But we need to collaborate more with each other. So that's the way I see the future. Carlos, 
I wanted to add to what Christian is saying and thinking of that question as to how should the nodes evolve, specifically our Lacknog. I don't have an answer, but I can give you, I can tell you something that happened precisely the first thing that Christian said, that is the issue of trust. I think, well, maybe, well, this is my view and I don't know about marketing, but I think that in the past, there was a sort of protectionism. People would conceal the flaws. Many organizations didn't want to speak of their problems. But I think that as time went by, and this is something that we can see in the best, uh, the largest internet players today, service providers, ISPs, everybody, the big players today, Everybody has a website saying basically the title says uh, this website is specifically for, for publishing all the bad things that happen in the network and, uh, and the users, because not everybody is a client. Usually it's the users so that we may all know what's happening, because if my email doesn't work, I want to know what's happening if it's my problem or if it's a generalized problem. And if I see it's a generalized problem, then I won't worry. And I think it took a long time for us, the technical community and people in general, it took us a long time to realize that sometimes you don't get so anxious if you know that it's a shared problem and that somebody is going to solve it. Because if not, um, so th there wouldn't be any problems, but things go out of order. Sometimes we break them. We try to improve things, and, uh, but it's part of our growth. So I think that trust that Christian said, I think it's um, uh, uh, allowing people um, uh, that, and to share good things and bad things, because we always learn of the good things. So there's a Spanish saying that, that goes, it's, it's a horrible saying that is that you learn uh, when you're uh, uh, with batteries, uh, when you're battered. Uh, so sometimes you learn precisely because uh, something hurts when uh, you make mistakes, you have a problem, then more than when we have a, a lot of time and we can focus on it. Uh, and, and, and we, we, but we don't focus on the problem itself. So I think that one of the paths uh, that we should do is go more in that direction. If for any reason, for privacy issues, for commercial or corporate reasons, we lost that uh, uh, the sharing of uh, problems and good things. I think that one of the, the possibilities would be to recover that and continue to evolve there. That is overcoming the problems and trying to improve. I think that that would be one of the future paths. Ariel, you're muted. Well, because I, because I have a mute in my mic, there's something that I, I tell you just an anecdote, but in Lacknock, we are all technical people. And as, as technical people, we love technical things. And, but for other things, we are almost uh, of no value. Many of those things, for instance, have to do, the clearest uh, case is design, uh, design the graphics, the, the nice thing. For instance, we went round and round and round discussing what the website uh, could be like and who could collaborate with uh, the website. We didn't know because nobody wanted to do it. So we have many issues that from the technical point of view, nobody debates or, well, there's a lot of debate, but you reach a, a conclusion. But there are other things where it's very difficult. What happened to us, 
is at the board was that we had a meeting with the previous manager who said well what is the mission the vision and the objective and the goal of uh, the organization we said well well yes we want basically we want to have a space for a collaboration to tell about things that we do and during the closing ceremony we in our reorganization process we are going to be presenting mission vision and objective of the organization so we are somehow accommodating all these issues that are not so technical and then have to do mostly with the institutional things i, I won't uh, I give any spoilers but it has to do with collaboration and especially with learning one of the things that uh, one of the most important things that we always discuss with Lucknow is that we want to be able to participate of the issues that we are experts in sometimes we make recommendations or we develop documents to avoid people from other fields that maybe are not as uh, uh, don't have the expertise to start telling us how the internet has to work. So I think that that's what uh, I think that uh, that's the direction we should take in the future. We have two minutes left for uh, Ricardo, for Arturo, and then a couple of minutes for questions. Ricardo, go ahead. Well, I'm going to touch upon another topic. I think that Lacknock has um, is in charge of speaking of uh, uh, equality, in, uh, racial and gender equality. I think that it's an interesting thing, and it is that the founders are all men. That's one of the problems. In the first meeting, there were all men, and the first, all the, pa the first panelists were men. Little by little, we incorporated women, and I hope that this is not. Uh, 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 binary in the future, so we have uh, Erika, Marcela, Natalia, so it's more diverse, but I think that there's still a lot to do, and I think that Lacknock could play a very good role taking these discussion topics. Ariel said uh, there are very good technicians, but there are some other things that uh, are difficult for us, and, and I think it's important to see how the technical community that is the male, uh, gays, uh, and uh, the um, elderly have the same opportunities as in the privileged, um, because we young men are the privileged. So usually this alliance, uh, some of the things that were done for the Afro-American community to obtain equality were done by the white uh, women's vote was done by by men and uh, the gay uh, rights uh, was done by the heterosexual because they were the dominant group so i think that we need to strengthen the minorities and help them so that uh, the atmosphere at work won't be so difficult because for us it's easy but it, if you ask other people that are not in that privileged situation, I think that their life is harder. Thank you, Arturo. Ricardo? Very quickly, everything that you mentioned is extremely important. Let me just say that Lacknog started as a small group with some people. And and we have an international role to play and we need to continue to support LACNA creating an enabling environment for it to have healthy discussions and solving problems. What Christian mentioned about trust is crucial. The fact that we may have a community and that people trust each other, well, we end up that solve problems together then that is a, is absolutely crucial. So that's why it's important to have events so that the community may 
continue to work together, not just Lackanock, but other local entities in many countries, their space or much more so that they everybody may see how important it is to know each other and to trust each other. And somebody said that some people, for instance, uh, may work for a company that competes against another, but it's the same people that today are working in one company and tomorrow in another. So you have to, to keep the trust with everybody in the community because today I can support you, but tomorrow I may need support. So it's important to have a trust. We should go on like this, supporting each other and promoting the creation of the norms. Well, we ran out of time, but there's only one question by Cesar Labrador, who asked about the steps that you recommend to create a national NOG. Cesar, please write, write that to the LACNOG list, or if not, to Christian and myself. It was an honor for me to have chaired this uh, uh, panel. You are my dearest friends. I hope in 10 years time, we can repeat something similar to this. So thank you. And I want to thank also the audience who was with us. And now we'll have the best of uh, the rest of the day. Maka?